Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here for Friday Night Flies once again. Uh, this is an obnoxious one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one I'm tying because uh, last week when Scotty Holmes was tying up his little pattern, um, I was trying to explain a mono loop to the guys. Um, and they were a little confused, so I'm going to show you that. This is also a GT fly. Um, as I've mentioned in the past couple of weeks, I'm getting ready to go to Christmas Island next month, so giant trevally are the big species that you want to catch. They're kind of the unicorns of the flats. Um, I wouldn't really call them a unicorn, actually. They kind of, they're the gangsters of the flats. They kill everything in sight, and uh, they're quite aggressive, so I'm um, usually fishing quite large flies and big rods. Uh, not looking forward to casting an 11 weight for those guys, but uh, if I hook one, it's all going to be worth it. Um, so yeah, this is a GT brush fly. Um, you can definitely downsize this for sure. I'm sure it would work for bull trout and stuff like that as well. Um, lake trout as well. Uh, lots of different species that you can target with this guy, but my main species with this one is going to be giant trevally. Um, yeah, so let's hop to it. Um, the hook on this fly is a beefy one. It is an owner Aki 6 aught. Um, if you saw the peanut butter fly, I was tying it on a 2 watt. This one is obnoxiously large compared to that. <clears throat> I was a little worried it wasn't going to fit my vise, but she does just fine. Just fine tune that just a wee touch. So when you're doing the bigger flies, you want to bury it deep into your jaw. If you do it on the tip, you're going to break them. Um, so bury that hook nice and deep and uh, shouldn't have any issues. Um, thread, 140. Obviously something a little bit stronger than what you would normally use. Um, so it's just 140 Danville. You can use 210 if you like as well. It's a little harder to find. I know a lot of guys like to tie flies like this with mono thread. Um, I like this stuff. Does the job just fine. I'm going to give that hook shank a good covering of thread for all the materials here. Um, it may look a little daunting this fly, but they're actually pretty simple to tie. Um, it's not too outrageous, but there is a few tricks here. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my thread slightly down the bend there, um, is I'm going to tie in a mono loop. So this is going to prevent our hackle tails from fouling on the hook bend, which is something you don't want. When these GTs roll in on the flats, they're there and they can be gone in a second. So you want to be ready for them. You don't want your fly to foul up and have things go wrong. So. I've, you can use whatever mono you want. I've got some Mason hard mono here. This is 40 pound. Um, I know Jordan uses like Maxima 60 pound. This stuff's pretty thick and it's a little bit stiffer than your normal mono. Um, so when you make that loop, it actually holds its shape, which is kind of nice. So I'm just going to invert my fly or the hook. I'm going to tie this in on the underside of the hook shank. I'm just going to get a couple wraps here just to kind of get them in place, then I can manipulate them. I can kind of get it to sit where I want. So I want it to sit right on the underside of the shank. You can make this loop as big or as small as you want. I'm gonna go somewhere around there. Something similar to like the hook gap-ish, give or take. I'm just gonna pinch those together. Get a few more securing wraps. I'm just trying to get this guy how I want. I'm going to go kind of halfway up the shank. It doesn't have to be exact. <clears throat> Hopefully that doesn't ruin my scissors too much. And I'm going to come back down here, really secure this in. I'll show you what this looks like in a second here. That's nice and secure. I'm just going to add some super glue to my thread wraps just to really lock that guy in place. back up. <clears throat> really lock that guy down. Be a little careful near the cut ends, but the 210 is pretty strong, so, or the 140 I should say, so I'm not too, too worried about it. And there we have it. So as you can see, there's a big loop off the back. And this is just going to stop any materials from coming down and wrapping around the hook shank, which we don't want. Um, and I did this on the underside just so everything can sit nicely on top and it just kind of rests there. Um, if you do it on top, they're going to kind of kink up a bit. I just kind of like how this sits here. All right, now into our tail portion. 
which is going to be, Brad's going to love this, Deceiver style hackles. So I've got some, just some white saddle hackles and an MFC barred saddle in tan and black. Um, if you watch the peanut butter video, I talked about some of the color combinations that uh, guys like to do for GTs, and tan and white is definitely one of them. Um, black and purple, black and red, olive and, and olive and white, um, stuff like that. So I'm just going to pair these together, and I'm going to tie them in with the non-shiny side facing outwards. And this allows that curvature, this is the hook shank, so that they stick out and they kind of resist the current a bit. just adds a little bit more movement. Um, so yeah, I'll just line these guys up here. I'm going to tie a set on my side. I'm going to tie these in fairly long. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> I'm jumping ahead of myself here. First thing I'm going to do is add a bit of EP. So I'm just going to grab some EP fiber. Just a small clump. I think I got a little too much there. I can take some out and throw it back on the hank. Touch more. You don't want to go too heavy with this stuff. Some decent taper to it there already. This is just going to kind of separate all these hackles so that they can flow a little more naturally. Just going to find my end point there. Just taper that out a bit. There we go. I'm going to tie this right on top. Two, three. Kind of get the length roughly where I want it. Fold that over. So this is tied right on top. If there's a couple little extras there. You want a nice taper on it. This is going to help kind of separate the uh, the hackles a bit when I tie them in now. <clears throat> so, got one pair. Oh, I had a pair there. Kind of matched up a bit. Again, so the nice side is actually facing you. I'm tying this set on my side of the uh, of the shank. I'm going to have that guy roughly there. This is where you're going to kind of get your measurement for how long you want them to be. Make these flies fairly long if you want. The beauty of saltwater species is they attack the head, so you don't really have to uh, worry about having short strikes and things like that. I'm going to make this a touch longer. I've already kind of matched up a couple pairs here of white and this, just so they're kind of similar. I'm going to tie that in on my side. sit how I want. You want to get this so that they're sitting right on the side of the, sh uh, the sh hook shank. There we go. Just like so. Don't mind if there's a few fluffies hanging off this guy. Adds to a bit of the bulk of the fly, which is fine. Actually, I'm just going to trim those guys up a touch. <clears throat> here. Perfect. So you kind of see I got the tan on the outside, the white on the inside, and they're kind of curving away from the hook shank, which is what I want. Now I'll rough these, roughly line these up for the other side. Try to match them up with the length, just roughly. This is probably the hardest part of the flies, getting these guys lined up how you want them. I'm just going to rotate that vise slightly. This guy, yeah, like I said, this is probably the hardest part of the fly, so really just take your time, get them sitting how you want. Kind of for that hook point there. Shy. Oops. Try to get them roughly the same length. Doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough. There we go. Now we got those tails all tied in. Trim away at the butt ends. And like I said, GTs crush flies. They come in at amazing speed. They are called the gangsters of the flats. They're kind of like drive-by artists. They kind of they're there one second, gone the next. So I'm gonna make this fly as bomb-proof as possible by adding 
super glue at certain stages. There we go. Got my tails tied in. Now we're going to add a wee bit of flash. Where did I toss that fly? Just make sure I got all my steps here. Yeah, we'll get into the flash game next. So the first wing I'm going to have is just some diamond wing fiber. Uh, this one's from Superfly. You can get them from other companies as well. Uh, Angel hair works good as well. And this is gold. So the tan and white are pretty good colors. I'm not going to take a lot of this, just a smidgen. See how much actually comes off of there. There we go. It's actually not too bad. We'll tie this in right on top for the tail. Like so. Three wraps there. Grab the extras, fold them back. Just kind of spread out my thumb a little bit. And the next flash is going to be some polar flash in pearl. I love this material. Um, if you watched any of my videos on the Pacific Angler channel, um, I use this stuff quite a bit. And it's a woven flash, and then as you fish it, it actually splits apart and gets very, very wispy and very lifelike. So it's one that I like to have in a lot of my flies these days. And again, tie it right on top. Try to stagger your lengths as best you can. There we go, we got our flash in on the tail there. You can see this is a pretty big fly, I think it's like six, seven inches, almost in the eight mark. Um, definitely gets up there in size. Just double check my next step, which is first chunk of marabou. So we're gonna add a little wing of marabou here. I'm just going to clean it up a touch. This is the Fish Hunter stuff uh, from Nature Spirit. They have the best quality and the best dye jobs on the planet for Marabou. Um, we have a whole bunch of it at the shop, so come on by and check it out. I'm going to tie this guy in. Let me take a little bit more off there. don't want it to be too dense. I want this to be able to flow really nice. This is going to act more like a wing than anything else. It's going to sit right on top here. A couple wraps. Trim that out of the way. And again, touch more super glue. Really secure this stuff in here. Double check my fly again. I've only tied a couple of these, so don't have it quite dialed in yet, but we're getting there. And then our next step is going to be the tan marabou. Um, so again, Nature Spirit Fish Hunter, best stuff out there. I've already kind of pre-selected a feather for me here. So I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm just going to grab it by the stem, lick my fingers, get that tip where I want it. We're going to tie this in right here. Just for the lad's security, I'm going to fold that back like so. And we'll trim that guy away. <clears throat> Very gently here, I'm just going to take my scissors, run it along the stem. This just allows everything to kind of pull back and make it a little more manageable. Marabou can be a little unruly at times. So I'm just going to take a few wraps around the shank here. Now I'm not doing touching turns, I'm kind of spacing them out a bit. This just allows water and stuff to flow through the materials. Got a few trapped here. I'm going to stop there, I don't want to overdo it. Plus the stem starts to get quite thick, so... Lock this guy in. Two good securing wraps there. Now when I trim this off, I'm going to leave a little bit of a butt end. This allows me to really lock this guy down. Just fold everything back. There's the butt end there. Get some good tight wraps on that guy. Wrap back on everything just slightly. Okay, come in here with a touch of super glue. Lock 
lock everything down. Just like so. And our next step is going to be some lateral scale. So every bait fish has a lateral line on it. So adding a lateral line on this guy just seems fish uh, uh, like the right thing to do. I'm just going to brush that out quick. Get things laying how I want. So I'm just going to take one strand. There should be enough for both sides. If I get my length right. It's just a really, it's a little bit thicker than your normal flash, but it has a little crinkle to it. It's a nice accent piece for most bait fish. So I'm going to tie that in a little shorter than the length of my tails and right on the side of the hook. You don't want to go uh, on the top or underneath. This guy. Again, just touch shy. Of the end of the tails right on the side of the hook. Keep it wraps. Just trim that guy away. Again, a little bit of super glue here. Just like so. So that guy's really tied in. See this guy's starting to come together. <clears throat> All right, now our next step. We are going to use some bucktail. So this is called a brush fly, and it uses um, pre-made brushes, which I'll go over in a second here. Um, so I'm just going to use some. It's a lot of synthetics and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use some bucktail just to surround the shank, and uh, it'll help to prop everything up a little bit. So I've just got some white here. I'm not going to use much, just a little bit. Again, this is just going to more act as a prop for that brush, just so it can help hold its form a little bit better. Trim that away as close to the skin as possible. And I don't want this to go too crazy. I'm going to get any crinkled or bent ones. That's going to be kind of my length there. So I'm going to trim that off. And I'm going to reverse tie this. So I'm going to tie it in with the butt ends near the back and the tips of the forward, and then I'm going to fold them back. So I'm just going to place that guy there. If you notice, I had placed a little bit of a gap there between the last set of materials and the bucktail. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to spread this around the hook shank. So it goes all the way around, kind of like so. I'm going to give it a couple good wraps back here. <clears throat> And there is tools for this, so I don't have anything, so I'm just using the top end of my hair stacker. And I can kind of just push that back. This kind of helps a little bit. A straw is a good idea to have too, I can find one. I'm just going to fold all that back, like so. And get this to go the way I want, just being a little unruly. Take your time. So I have bucktail all the way around the hook shank there. I'm just going to wrap back on this a touch. As you can see, that kind of spreads out. It's quite wispy. When bucktail is not tied in super dense, it actually has a lot of movement to it. So as this gets wet, it's going to really hold its shape, which is what I want for this next step, which is the brush. Just confirm that. Yep, we're on the brush stage. So this is a Just Add H2O brush, a Frenzy Fly brush. Um, Renzetti actually makes these, which is kind of cool. Um, so Renzetti's got their own material line. This is the, I can't remember what color it is, golden tan or something along those lines. We'll just call it tan. Um, it's kind of a cool one. I can special order them in at the shop for you. And it comes on a cord. It's pre-done, a bunch of flash and a few other synthetics. So what I like to do is there's a wire core and that's what I'm going to tie in. So I'm just going to pluck some material off of there just to create a nice clean tying point. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little bit of a wire exposed there. I'm going to tie that in right here. Got some good tight wraps. Be careful over the cut, the butt ends there. Because it is wire so it can shred your uh, your thread and 
just some more super glue. And want to make these flies as bomb proof as possible. Really secure that guy in. And just with a dubbing needle here, I'm going to come in, kind of pick out some of these fibers, get kind of trapped when they're in the package. So I'm just going to pick them out a bit. This makes it a little easier to wrap as well. Obviously, you can make your own brushes and stuff as well. A pre made makes life a lot easier. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stroke all those fibers back. Take a few wraps here. These are just one wrap right in front of the other. Just keep wrapping away. Think I'll maybe get one more in here, or half turn. A whole more material to put in, so that's probably good there. Don't want to overdo the flash. Come in, two wraps there. Two wraps on the other side. Don't use your scissors to cut these guys as they will destroy scissors. Come in here with a pair of wire cutters. I'm just gonna mash that butt in there. Careful with your thread here. Wire and thread does not mix. Hold all those straggling fibers back. Come in here with my dubbing needle again, just kind of pick everything out. There we go. You can see this is all starting to come to life. It's a good idea to kind of brush this out as well. Get everything sitting how you like. Looking pretty good. Now I don't want it to be super flashy. It's just a personal choice. So I'm just going to take some white marabou. And again, just going to tie it in by the tip. This is going to help veil it a little bit. Add a little bit of a halo effect. A little translucency to the fly. Add a little bit of life as it will look like there's uh, something inside. Fold those back. Just a couple wraps here, nothing too crazy. That's probably good there. all that down. This is where we're going to build a nice little thread head. Alright, chunk of fluffies there, right into a whip finish. Don't go too crazy with the whip finish because I am going to resin some eyes and stuff into there. Now I'm going to brush everything out again. Sitting nice and pretty like. <clears throat> Looks like there's a few trap fibers there. There we go. There you go. There's basically the bulk of our fly done. Which is looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here, just squeeze the sides a bit. Because I gotta put some eyes on this guy. I'll do my side first. So you can go as big as you want with eyes on this fly. Um, I'm using some 8 millimeters. You can go 10 as well. Again, this is the uh, Just Add H2O stuff from Renzetti. They've got some cool ones. This is the Rainbow Squid, which is a really cool, lifelike kind of eye. I'm going to be using the Rainbow Ghost, which is this guy here. So big pupil on it. Look really lifelike in the, in the light, which is what we want. You want these big obnoxious fish to be thinking that uh, they're eating something real. So I'm just going to kind of flatten that material just a touch with my thumb. And 
I'm gonna seat these with a zapping gap gel. So let me use this on the uh, the peanut butter video. Just with dubbing needle there, I'm just gonna grab one eye. Open this guy up. Put a small dab on the back here. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna place that over there. The marabou there. I'm just gonna squeeze that against the hook shank. The stuff sets pretty quick, which is nice. And it doesn't really move, so kinda like that. Do the one on this side. And I'm just going to position some of these materials. That guy's bugging me, so he's going away. Roughly position this stuff how I like it. That's how I want that. Grab our next one here. Put that lid back on. get stuff on your fingers. <laughs> Roughly place that kind of this way I kind of want it. Right there. That matches up. And just squeeze that onto the hook shake. There you go. That's looking pretty good. Now for the final step. Just gonna get rid of those scissors. I'm just going to use some Solaris Thin to seat these guys. So I'll start with my side, same way I did it on the peanut butter video. I'm just going to coat the eye, draw a straight line from the eye to the hook eye, and then I'll cure it. Kind of get that where I want there. That strand of marabou is acting a little crazy. like so and come right across right to the hook eye and I'm going to cure that up try not to look at the light <laughs> it's uh, super bright one thing that you have seen us do is zap a fly and it smokes and stuff like that I was actually talking to the owner of Solarez the other day and uh, he's saying that's not such a good idea that means you're overcooking the resin so it happens mostly with the bone dry. Uh, one quick trick that he told me is to start your flashlight, zap it for a second, take it away. Let it cure, zap it for a second, take it away. Cure it a little bit slower. Um, this stops all the fumes from coming up. There has been uh, some reactions to some people. Uh, I know Deb who watches the show has had some issues um, and stuff like that, but curing it a little bit slower. I know we want to cure it up as fast as we can, but curing it up nice and slow is kind of the ticket. Um, using a well-ventilated area is a good way to do it as well. So as you can see, I've got a nice bead of resin there from the eye to my thread wraps. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll cure them up a little bit slower. 10 seconds of curing is still pretty damn quick. Coat that eye. right to the thread wraps. I'm going to cure that up. Oop, a little bit of smoke, curing a little quick. <clears throat> Some people wear sunglasses as well when they're doing the resins. So I just try to not look at it. And one more little safety tip is once I turn that light off, if I touch this, it's actually still going to be hot. It's actually still curing. Um, so take your time when you're when you're curing before you start touching stuff. That guy looks all right. And now I'm just gonna seal off all my thread wraps with a bead right around. And that's going to, there we go. Get a little dab going on there, all the way around. This is going to really Secure those eyes in place. 
shouldn't have them falling off. Okay, we'll take that. Just like so. There you have it, the finished GT brush fly. Tie it up in a bunch of different colors, downsize it if you want to. Uh, like I said, bull trout would probably have no problem eating something like this. Uh, I think the six aught hook's a little obnoxious, but uh, like a size one or uh, size one B10S from Gammy would be a wicked hook for, for bull trout. Just downsize this sucker a touch. There you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed that, picked up some new tricks, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.